Hey guys, and welcome to episode 41. And we got quite a bit to go over, but for the most part, it's going to be a lot of um, exciting, exciting stuff to touch on. So, bear with me. Let's get into it. PlayStation, the uh, trailer for the week is Neo 2. Check this out. As long as people are people. You are a shiftlet. I will sniff out the very finest stones. Judging by their glow, they're the real thing. And I just want to slay yokai. Nothing more, nothing less. Next time I see that thing, it'll taste my blade. Get the hell away from me now! Head to a worry! Well, let us see how you fare against me. Answer me, Toshimitsu. Where are the spirit stones? The dreams of the spirit stones come at a price. To surrender oneself to a wish or desire. How frightful. So this is what you've become. Let this be the end of wars waged with spirit stones. All right, guys. So that was Neo Two. Um, looks pretty good. Uh, I'm not. I haven't played the first Neo, so uh, I'm not really one on experience to talk about it. Uh, but it does look like it's it's a rather well put together game. So um, if you're looking for that, that does release this week. Check that out. Um, all right. So the reimagining the reimagining of Final Fantasy VII on PS4 has been no easy task. Um, it's been two decades since the original. Um, and Midgore is looking across the tides of time elegantly. Uh, we obviously have a lot more power to deal with now that uh, we've got the PS4 uh, that's going to be running Final Fantasy VII. Um, but it seems that those behind the remake are definitely making sure they take advantage of the extra power. Um, after seeing the opening movie, it's very apparent that the team is doing Final Fantasy VII justice. And I can't wait to see it next month when it releases on the 10th. We know it's going to be episodic, but uh, the opening movie in itself is just awesome looking. Uh, and knowing that a lot of us that still play games today grew up playing Final Fantasy VII, uh, this will be very interesting when it rolls out. So uh, moving on, Ghost of Tsushima is releasing the 26th of June and the collector's and digital deluxe versions have been detailed so bear with me as we go through all these details. Um, the digital deluxe edition will contain the game, a mini art book, director's commentary, a dynamic theme, a hero of Tsushima skin set and two in-game items. Uh, the physical special edition will include the game in a steelbook case, the digital mini art book, director's commentary, two engagement items, and the Hero of Tsushima skin set for the same price as the digital, which is $69.99 US and $89.99 Canada. Um, so check that out. Now moving on to the big one, the collector's edition is packed with extras, including that steelbook case, a cloth map, a Sashimono War Banner, a Fur Furoshiki Wrapping Cloth, a Sakai Mask, 48-page mini art book, Director's Commentary, Dynamic Theme, Hero Shishima Skin Set, and two in-game items. That's going to retail at $169.99 in the U.S. 
So by all means, check those out if you're into collecting and all that good stuff. Um, a lot of it looks really cool. Um, if I had the money to delve into it and spend a little extra to have some collector stuff for here, I would. Um, but probably not going to go there with this one. All right. Moving on from PlayStation into Xbox, Xbox's uh, trailer for the week is going to be Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Check this out. that was already in, will, in the will of the wisps I, I swear I can talk I promise um, okay so bleeding it <clears throat> bleeding edge is getting bigger and the latest is a new character in a brand new map the fighter's name is Mecco and he's described as a trash talking crab walking dolphin piloting a mech and a survivor of brutal experiments um, it's a ranged tank with limited mobility who can pull allies to safety. It absorbs damage with its bubble shield and generates power orbs to power up his specials. Uh, he will be available for launch or at launch for all players. And the new map is called Landslide and is set in Mexico. It features defensive power ups and more trains that are said to be smaller and a little less deadly. But obviously, avoid getting run over by a train. Uh, the map will also be available at launch on March 24th with a closed beta beginning on the 13th and a pre-order seems to include you in the beta that's going to run until the 16th. So if you haven't pre-ordered yet or if you have and haven't heard anything, uh, by all means, the 13th through the 16th is the uh, closed beta for Bleeding Edge, so check that out. Um, Moving on, Space Engineers will roll out uh, April 15th to Xbox One. The open world sandbox is a builder colonization and survival game that released on PC in 2013. Uh, having a survival and creative mode will obviously change your experience within the game. Uh, and it's based on obviously what you select. In survival, you will establish a base of operations somewhere which will allow you to mine resources and explore the planet itself, um, whereas creative mode you can create pretty much anything, spaceships, uh, I guess, colonies, and all that good stuff um, from scratch, so it is kind of cool. Um, it will be 1999 when it releases, so if you're looking for something to just kind of pass the time, uh, by all means check out Space Engineers. So. Moving on from Xbox to Nintendo. Nintendo's trailer for the week is Langrisser 1 and 2. Check this out.
無事だったのか父上何を言われるのです俺の剣を受けてみせろ無駄な抵抗はやめることだな終わりだ父が落ちましたはい、それは、ランガーシリア1 and 2、um, so、kind of uh, like, like, um, uh, ですよ。それは、ランガーシリア1 and 2、それは、ランガーシリア1 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 On Mario themed merchandise from the online store. The catch is that you have to redeem the discount with 450 platinum points. The offer ends March 31st and you'll have access to purchase what you want to purchase within the store by April 30th. In order to get your code, click access now. You'll be taken to the Nintendo online store, add your eligible, eligible items, enter your code in the discount field, and check out. So there's that. Um, the Nintendo PlayStation Mystery Bidder was revealed. Now, real quick, I just want to touch on this. Yes, I said Nintendo PlayStation. So, for those of you that are playing the home game and haven't been tracking kind of what this is,、uh, originally Nintendo and Sony、uh, were together working on a project. That project was the Nintendo PlayStation. Uh, it does look very much like a Super Nintendo. It was cartridge based, but all over the, the,、uh, the equipment itself, it does say Sony and PlayStation. And、um, it looked actually pretty cool.、Um, but obviously, it never came to fruition. So there was a、uh, prototype replica. Well, it wasn't a replica, it was just prototype. Uh, pre release that was put together、uh, and actually、uh, was ready to pretty much hit the market for the most part. It looks like it's entirely together.、Um, but anyway, that being said, it was something that never came to fruition. Sony and Nintendo went their separate ways, and now we have Sony and Nintendo separately. So, kind of a good thing because Sony ended up going、uh, directly disc based. And completely the opposite direction of Nintendo in a way, and it's, it's proof to their benefit. But Nintendo, in its own right, has done great for themselves along the way. So, that being said,、um, it could have been a whole different world if, if the two stayed together. It's kind of amazing.、Um, okay, so Anyway, it went up for auction. It was sold for $360,000. It was purchased by Greg McLemore, the founder of pets.com, which is a web domain that was bought back in the 90s.、Um, I'd say that it's a great addition to any gaming collection, especially his,、uh, as long as it's put behind some protective glass somewhere.、Um, and it's going to make an awesome conversation piece, to say the least. Uh, but anyway, it has, again, it has PlayStation all over the system, and it looks a lot like a Super Nintendo with a Sega cartridge.、Um, check it out online. It's actually it's everywhere now、uh, from the auction house that、uh, sold it off. So,、uh, yeah, interesting a little bit of history there for you. All right, moving on from Nintendo to Stadia, and as usual, we don't have a、uh, Stadia video because they are still building. But we do have some good news. So, Stadia is rolling out 4K gaming on the web.、Uh, they're finally fulfilling a key rollout promise, but it obviously has a couple caveats. You have to be a pro subscriber in order to access 4K on Stadia. So, pretty much like you know, some of the benefits that you get from being a Plus subscriber or a Xbox member. So, Not really a surprise there,、uh, but they can't really restrict you from playing online because that's the entire platform. So, this may just be their way of saying, okay, well, if you want to be pro,、uh, then you'll get 4K gaming. If not, then you're going to get what you're limited to. 
uh, via connection below 4K. All right, so uh, anyway, that being said, um, it does need a fast internet connection to work, obviously, but it's been reported to test um, on a good or an even okay internet connection to still get 4K visuals. So the features seen on the Stadia dashboard by a 4K icon on the in-game menu. Although it isn't official just yet, the fact that it shows should be very good news for those that own Stadia. Um, I myself, I haven't looked at it um, to see if there's a 4K emblem uh, when I pull it up on my TV. I do have a 4K TV though, so I, I do want to look at this. Um, but it's not official. So, I mean, it's there, you can see it, but there's no telling that they're actually using it yet. Um, so we'll wait to hear more from Stadia in the near future, hopefully, that this is a live thing. Um, all right, so Google's opening a studio to make Stadia games. This makes a lot of sense. Uh, the studio would be de dedicated to making content for Stadia and is located in Playa Vista, California. Now what's cool about this is the studio itself will be led by Shannon Studsill, the former head of, San of Sony Santa Monica, which is the studio that's famous for God of War. Um, this is much needed. Uh, it will put that studio under a lot of pressure though because the ability to pull developers from their existing platforms is not very easy. That being said, they're kind of relying on third-party titles to hit Stadia at this point, and that's something that the developers have to port over and approve in order for release on Stadia. So the problem with that is that developers are a little wary on doing so because of the fact that if they jump ship from a platform such as Sony or Microsoft or even Nintendo to join forces with Stadia and then Stadia decides or Google decides, hey, we're not really going to stay in the gaming market, then they've officially jumped ship to what may end up being something that runs them into the ground. Um, it's going to be a little hard to say, leave the likes of Sony, Microsoft, or Nintendo, and then turn around however many months later, years later, who knows, and say, hey, you guys still want to work together on content? I know we did that thing with Stadia back there, but yeah, they're not really going to continue forward in games, and that's what we are, so can we come back pretty please? Um... It just, it's not a good look. So a lot of developers are seeing that and we'll see because if some, or if uh, Stadia does stay in games for the long term, then it'll be very, very good for them to develop those developer relationships. However, right now, a lot of people are very, very wary. Um, they are developing some Stadia titles at their home studio but it's been a lot of hush-hush type stuff, so um, we'll see what Stadia does. If they start to get multiple studios involved and they start running their own three, four studio branches that can work on different titles, then you know, you'll know you see a lot of dedication there on Stadia's part and maybe some of those developers will in fact come over and uh, join the likes of Stadia going forward. We'll just have to wait and see. That's it, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and by all means, we'll see you next week for episode 42. Have a good one.